Welcome to another tutorial on Do-It-Yourself Easy. Today, we're diving into Power Query to explore two different methods for calculating sums and averages, as well as three approaches for using these results in custom columns. We'll break everything down step-by-step step to ensure clarity, making it easier for you to follow along and apply these techniques to your own datasets. Let's get started. Our dataset today contains information on 500 employees from a company, and our objective is to calculate the total sales and the average sales generated by the sales department. To begin, we'll bring this data into Power Query. Start by right-clicking on any cell in the table and selecting Get Data from Table or Range. A window will pop up, and you'll see an option to confirm whether your table has headers. Make sure the box labeled My Table Has Headers is checked, then click OK. At this point, if you're new to Power Query, feel free to pause the video to explore the interface and familiarize yourself with its features. It's important to get comfortable with the layout before moving on. Once you're ready, let's proceed. To calculate the sum and average, we'll first use the group by feature. It's worth noting that using group by directly on the table will overwrite your original data. To avoid this, we'll duplicate the table first. To do this, right-click the table's name in the query panel on the left and choose Duplicate. With a duplicate in place, go to the Home tab and select Group By. A window will appear, offering two modes, Basic and Advanced. Choose Advanced, as this gives you the flexibility to group by multiple columns and apply multiple aggregations. By default, Power Query includes a placeholder grouping option. Let's delete this, as we won't be using it for now. Next, we'll add two aggregations. For the first, name it Total Sales, select Sum as the operation, and choose the Sales column, which contains the sales figures in euros. For the second aggregation, name it Average Sales, select Average as the operation, and again, choose the Sales column. After setting this up, press OK. You'll see a new table with two columns one showing the total sales and the other showing the average sales. This table is entirely separate from your original data, so feel free to rename it for clarity. For this example, let's name it sum and average. Now let's move on to the second method for calculating sums and averages. Begin by duplicating the original table once again. This time, select the sales column, navigate to the transform tab, and choose the sum option under statistics. Power Query will generate a single scalar value representing the total sales. You'll notice a small icon in the Query panel on the left indicating that this is a scalar value. Repeat this process with another duplicated table, but this time select Average instead of Sum. You'll now have two scalar values, one for the total sales and one for the average sales. Take a moment to compare these results with those from the group by method. You'll see they are identical, However, scalar values are limited in their use. If you want to perform further calculations with them, you'll need to convert them into either a table or a list. To convert a scalar value into a table, click on the scalar value in the query panel and select to table. Once the table is created, rename it to something descriptive, like table and sum. You can do the same for the average, renaming it to table and average. Alternatively, if you prefer working with lists, Duplicate both tables, go to the Transform tab, and select Convert to List. For this example, we will only convert to list the total sales. Finally, before proceeding, I will name this list as List and Sum. Feel free to use any other name. Converting scalar values into tables or lists provides the flexibility needed for calculations in custom columns. Now that we've prepared our data, let's move on to using these values in custom columns. Our goal is to calculate the percentage of total sales for each row in the main table. Start by going back to the original table, then navigate to the Add Column tab and select Custom Column. In the Custom Column window, name the column Percent of Grand Total with Table. Begin by referencing the Sales column. You can do this by either double-clicking the column name from the available columns list or typing it manually. After referencing the Sales column, Add a division symbol to indicate you'll be dividing these values. Now to reference the total sales from the table format, type the name of the table you created earlier, such as sum and average, 
followed by square brackets containing the column name, like total sales. Since this table only has one row, you also need to specify the row index, which starts at zero. Your formula should look something like this. Each worker's sales divided by the value in row zero of the sum and average table under the column total sales. And you'll see the calculated percentages appear in the new column. These percentages are not yet formatted. So click the small dropdown in the column header and choose percentage to apply the correct format. Now let's try the same calculation using the list format. Create another custom column, this time naming it percent of grand total with list. The process is similar, but the formula will differ slightly. Start by referencing the sales column and adding a division symbol. To access the total sales from the list format, use the list.first function. Type list.first, open parentheses, and enter the name of your list, such as list and sum. Close the parentheses to complete the formula, which should look like this. Each worker's sales divided by the function list.first and the name of the list in parentheses. Click OK to confirm, and once again, format the column as percentages. The results will match those obtained from the table format. For those looking for an even simpler approach, it's possible to perform this calculation directly from the source data without creating separate tables or lists. To do this, create a new custom column and name it percent of grand total with source. Reference the sales column, add a division symbol, and use the list.sum function. Inside the parentheses, reference the sales column from the source data by typing source, followed by square brackets containing the column name. The formula should look like this. Each worker's sales divided by the function list.sum and the total sales of the source table. Press OK, and the calculated percentages will appear instantly. This approach avoids the need for additional steps, as list.sum directly computes the sum of the source column. At this point, you can decide whether to load individual tables, lists, or the entire main table into Excel. For this tutorial, I'll load all the table we have created by going to the Home tab and selecting Close and Load. And that's all there is to it. Today, we've covered multiple methods for calculating sums and averages in Power Query and demonstrated how to use these results effectively in custom columns. I hope this tutorial was helpful. If you enjoyed it, please like, subscribe, and leave a comment. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.